Welcome to Every Way Woman. So at what point is saying I'm sorry past being polite? I've noticed that women are apologizing for everything. Is it too much, Amber? I think it's too much. I had a friend that apologized every second of the day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I stepped on your foot, I'm sorry. And I just got tired of it. And I told her one time, I said, stop saying sorry. And she was like, you know, appalled by the fact that I told her to stop saying sorry. Well, I think even apologies, the I'm sorry has lost the actual meaning of right. being sincere mm -hmm. and being sorry because we hear it so many times. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I well, think it's depends. not real. I have to say I'm sorry because of my clients when I do hair and makeup. If I do something Why? and they don't like it, I'm sorry. Let me change it. Oh. But, oh. but in a relationship, uh -uh, am I sorry? Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> what if you do that makeup and you know it look good? Are you going to say, like, I'm sorry? Like, when, when is that cut off, that I'm limit sorry. part? Of saying, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and change it. Yeah. I'm like, I'm you sorry. Know, you it's going to have to stay the same. I, I'm, 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 I'm a teacher. I'm an instructor. And um, I did have a, a student approach me and say, you know, for someone who teaches us to be confident mm -hmm. and to believe in ourselves and put ourselves out there, I noticed that you say you're sorry a lot. And what? that she called you out. Uh, yeah, and it took me back. And I had to think about it. I was like, whoa. And then when I was hearing myself, and then I was sub self-conscious about it every time I said it. Wow. And um, so I think, yeah, definitely. I was saying it too much yeah. without really being conscious. Cheryl, see, I don't actually volunteer that many of them unless it's something that is truly sincere. You right. Know, I have no problem admitting when I've done something wrong, and I will definitely apologize for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But in terms of just peppering speech with them, absolutely not. Do you not. think that comes from your expertise as a human relations professional? You know what? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe it does. I mean, I can think of uh, a perfect example. Um, there was a person at my church who asked me if I would be willing to volunteer to sit on a particular committee. Um, I told her I would get back to her because I wasn't going to just, you know, commit to it right away. Uh, and ultimately, she came back to me. And for that, I did apologize mm -hmm. because the answer was no. So that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I would like to No, and I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm not going to be able to participate. Ooh, I know. I have, I have a couple and then they worked together because I had my was took my niece out for a play date mm -hmm. and I had left because it was for kids and when I came back one of the teachers came up to me and said your daughter my niece but she was so your daughter won't apologize to this child and you're and she has to leave and oh. I said okay well let me tell her that she needs to apologize I was like you need to say you're sorry and she said no I said why not you, you have to say you're sorry and she said why I'm not sorry why should I have wow. to say I'm sorry? Wow. And I didn't really fully get the full story of what mm -hmm. happened. But I noticed years later, I ran into the same situation with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe it was just that child. But it was also my own child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who then said to me, no, I don't want to say I'm sorry. And mm -hmm. I said, honey, you have to say you're sorry. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching her that she needed to say she was sorry, mm -hmm. even though she was not sincere about it. Well, right. Okay. So wow. is, should we do that to children, even as ourselves, to force somebody to say sorry to us if they don't necessarily mean it? I will do that to get out of situations. I mean, I'll admit it. I will give an apology, even if I'm not truly sincere about it. And in a way, I know I'm just servicing right. myself. The person feels mm -hmm. that, though. The but, person feels right. that Absolutely. you're not sincere about that. No, I'm a good actor. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm kidding. Sorry. All my I'm stories sorry. have been sincere to right. all of you. Okay. Must be terrifying. But, but you know what? But you know what? That actually brings up a good question because mm -hmm. how do you? Because obviously we need to teach you know our kids, our daughters, you know our little girls, you know, but our kids in general, we need to teach them you know how to how to give a sincere apology. But mm -hmm. then is it? Is it, you know, youthful stubbornness? Right, right. Are you being, is it, it a custom else? that we're teaching them it's customary to say I'm sorry? Yeah, so right. when a man come right. along and try and abuse them, they like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, but, you know, you know I mean, and, and it does, sometimes the, the more women apologize, the more vulnerable or weak sometimes mm -hmm. will appear. And a wise man once told me, he said, a woman shouldn't apologize for nothing. Who wise man is that? Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's available. No, but that's true. But listen, so the point in mm -hmm. that is you shouldn't apologize for who you are. No, that's and not and I that's think that I think so many people do that. They'll apologize for being successful. They'll mm -hmm. just apologize for their situation in life as a way of sympathizing with somebody. Mm -hmm. But that's something they should be, you know, ashamed of. Anna, what do you think? I think, well, like I said, in relationships, I'm not sorry because it is who why? I am, and if you can't accept me for who I am, then why do you deserve a chance with me? You're so strong <laughs> in that. You really saying. are. I'm just saying. But right. did, you, did your mom teach you that? I mean, what in you yeah. instilled that? She told me to be myself. Mm. But sometimes I have to admit, the real part inside of me, you know, when I am alone, it's like, man, like, 
why are they like are they intimidated by me or what? Like does that have to play dumb or something but to so, get a good guy? Like so it you brings know? out almost like an insecurity in it. It does, it does. But then I stop for a minute there. I'm like, screw that. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm just like next time you say you are sorry, and you bitch don't even mess with you. Sorry. I mean, okay, but on, on the they you know sorry, subject right. of apologies, <laughs> is it appropriate to ask or demand an apology from somebody? Yes. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If someone has treated you in a manner that you know is unacceptable for you, then you need to let them know about it, and you mm -hmm. need to let them know it's like, hey, we need to start fixing this, and here is how I expect you to fix it. Yes. You know, obviously, own whatever part of it you need to, but, but what absolutely. If they don't? What if they don't? Well, then, if, you know, it's okay. It's okay not to have friends all the time. Not everybody really? has to be your friend. Right. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm on the same page with you because at some point, if you tell, if you don't tell somebody. Hey, you need to apologize to me because you hurt my feelings. You may not know why, but it happened. And but let me explain to you why. Absolutely. So it's got to be followed up with an explanation. Let me explain to you why. Do you? We're all thinking. Let me stop right now. Let me tell you. I got boundaries. I think we all meditated at that moment. But you know what? No, there's a lot of wisdom in that because I'm, you know, I'm in a situation now where I'm, I have a friend who's a young man and okay. I'm, I'm somewhat displeased with his behavior oh. and at one point I almost just threw in the towel and said you know what screw it I'm out and then I said you know what I haven't given him I haven't informed him of what the actual problem mm. is so yeah. I need to give him the opportunity to make it right before I just or, check in the towel. Or have you ever done the classic apology where you don't know what you've done wrong, but it must have been something? And yes. Then, and I am so sorry. I feel For like whatever I, I did. It, but I'm sorry. That you're uh, upset by it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. You don't do that, Amber? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're not thrown She's in the like, I say sorry when I'm needed. Okay. Well, lesson learned. Apologize when you need it. Yeah. Stay tuned for more Every Way Woman when we come back from this break. Thanks for watching. Coming up next, more Every Way Woman. Are you an Every Way Woman? As women, we take care of everyone else, but we often choose to forget to take, about our, take care of ourselves. Dr. Sherry Thomas is here to talk to us about the importance of checkups and taking care of ourselves. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for joining us. I'm gonna be the first to say, I don't take care of myself. Why should women go to the doctor? Well, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of everybody else. <laughs> that is true, that is true. But again, so when I decide to go to the doctor, what should I be asking my doctor since I've taken so long to get there? Well, if you haven't been in over a year, you need to think about just a yearly exam, a yearly checkup. So women over 21 need to check their blood pressure, their cholesterol, have a pap smear and a pelvic exam. And then the doctor should go over different screening risks for you, your family history. Do you have a family history of high blood pressure, diabetes? Um, are you up to date on your immunizations? And then uh, ask you about other things such as do you exercise, do you eat well, and do you smoke? Now, when you ask all those questions, that would mean that a woman would need to know her body. What are, how can we educate our women on knowing their bodies? Well, think about your body in terms of anything else you maintain. Uh, think about what you've heard and what your other girlfriends say and also online you can look online in terms of recommendations based on your age of what you should have checked uh, we all know once we hit 20 we should start doing breast exams we all know once we become sexually active we should start having pelvic exams and being screened for sexually transmitted diseases um, we all know once we hit 50 or we should know we need screening for colon cancer right a very common cause of death in women. So in, in knowing your body, and I'll use myself, like the other day I did an exam for myself and I felt a lump and I still haven't gone to the doctor um, because I'm making those excuses of you know not going too busy, et cetera. When I get to the doctor, um, usually they have me come in and out. What are some of the questions that I can ask the doctor to let them know, I need your time. I need you to spend some quality time with me. Right, so you'll want to be specific. You're making an appointment just for this lump right. okay. and not 
for your yearly exam. Okay. So focus on your breast and not, oh, I also have a hear, earache and I might have a cold today. Can you look at that? Focus on your lump in your breast. Mm. Tell him or her how long it's been there. Do you have a family history of breast cancer? When was your last mammogram? And that I do breast exams every month and this is new or, you know, I just saw a show and I saw on this breast exam and this has been there maybe just a week or two. But you know, Dr. Thomas, and again, I have to use myself, sometimes it's so difficult going to the doctor because you don't feel like your physician is an advocate and you feel like they just throw you in there, they feel on you and they send you out. How will I know if I'm with the right doctor or how do I find a doctor that will be an advocate for me? Oh, that's an even better question than what to focus on for that little appointment. Find a primary care provider. It may not be a doctor. It may be a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant. But find a primary care provider who you feel comfortable talking to, that you can tell this person everything. Uh, you can tell them all these intimate details that you're going to need to tell them, things that you might not tell your mother or your sister or your best friend, mm -hmm. because they need to know that. And they need to listen so that they can help you get through whatever it is you're going through. So my daughter's going to go away in college, and we're starting to have this conversation about, you know, when you're away, mommy's not there anymore. What do I tell her when she's in another state about looking for a doctor? Should I be involved in the process, or should I just let her handle it? Well, one of the things she'll ask is her friends, which is what we do. Yes. You have a doctor <laughs> you like, and so they've been screened. There's also ways online we can look at credentials of the doctor. And then meet the doctor and see if you like the doctor or the nurse practitioner or whomever you've chosen. With your daughter going to school, a lot of times they will have a clinic. And the clinic has several different healthcare providers. Oh, that but that's so through. impersonal. But you know, actually, you get some great doctors. I've, I've had some friends that have uh, worked at different university programs. Mm -hmm. And you get some great doctors, too, but they have a lot of the nurses and the, the, their friends will say, oh, go see this person. They'll, okay. they'll get this taken care of. And it's actually geared more towards students and not somebody uh, my age. But I think the message is the most important thing is that she needs to go to the doctor and not be like her mother and wait to the last minute, right? She needs to take care of herself. There you go. Know where it is. <laughs> know what their hours are. Right. Know when, if they're not there, you need to go to the emergency room. Know where the local emergency room is or, or find a doctor in town that everybody else calls when they're closed on Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Well, I have to tell you, you've inspired me. I am gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the doctor, I'm gonna make an appointment. We take care of everyone. Before you can take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. Women, go to the doctor. Don't be like me, go to the doctor. Stay tuned for more Every Way Woman. We will be right back. We'll be back with Everyday Fitness. Are you in every way woman? All right, so clear some space in your living room because Lisa is going to show us how we can do circuit training in your very own home. This is Every Way Woman. Some of you don't think you can get a good workout at home, but it's easier than you think, and there are a lot of benefits. So Lisa Snow is here to tell us all about them. Lisa, so what do we need to get a good workout at home? Well, really at home, you already have your equipment. Okay. And so I don't have this thing. Well, you can go out and buy one. This is a Bosu. Oh. And the great thing about working out at home is you can buy your equipment if you really want it, and then you can make a one-time payment. And then you can do anything you want with it. Is this something like this expensive or? No, it's not compared to a gym membership oh, or there you go. constantly That's paying. Yep. Yeah, you, it's a one-time payment and you can use it however you want. Okay, so what do I do with it? So this is a BOSU and you can use it standing this way. You can flip it over. You can do whatever. But right now we're going to work on our abs with it. Okay. So a, talking <laughs> right part with the a good right exercise now. for the BOSU is you can have a seat. It's a little wobbly so it makes you use your core and stabilize. You put your hands on the floor and you just extend your feet out and bring them in. Tighten your core as you do it. And you can do 
So many reps, you can do it until you have a burnout, or you can do three sets of 10. Might be a little less reps than you think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how advanced do I have to be? Let me figure you this don't, thing out. It's all to your level, so okay. if you need to put your hands down flat on the floor, you can do that just until, yep. Yeah, so it's definitely wobbly. Yep, so <laughs> okay, tighten your core. put my hands down? Yeah, for starting okay, out, you can put you. your hands on the floor, <laughs> tighten your core, and just make sure you're contracting every time oh, you pull I'm your knees in. Oh, every time. That's all you need to do. <laughs> it's happening here. Exactly, and the cool thing is that when you're at home and say, oh, I can't really buy a BOSU right now, I don't know how to do it, you can just grab some pillows off your couch, and I'm sure you have pillows on your couch. I, I sure do. I usually lounge in them, but exactly. uh, I could try something else. Why not switch it up? <laughs> okay, so it's what do basically I do the same kind of thing as you did with the BOSU, because it's raising you off the ground, and you can still do this, and when your feet go out, they're not on the ground like they would be if you're flat, and you do the same thing, contract your core, and since you have two pillows on each top of each other, it makes you have the same resistance. Now, is this an alternative to this, or do I need both things? It's an alternative. Okay, cool. Yes, if you don't feel like buying the BOSU right away, you, and you want to work up to the BOSU, start on the pillows. This is pretty hard, too. Exactly. <laughs> I'm moving all over the place. That's the whole point. But look at me go. I know, you're doing great. That's awesome. So okay. it's just as long as you keep contracting the core, and you have your stabilization, Check. you're, all, you're okay. all set. Okay, what do I do with the weight? Dumbbells. I love dumbbells because you can work out any part of your body. You can do the normal curls. I thought you were talking to me. Okay, no. never mind. <laughs> you could do the normal curls. You could do the shoulders. You can even do the legs. You can lift anything you want. Cool thing with dumbbells is if you don't have them, you can actually use cans of soup. You can use water bottles. And even if they're light, the more repetitions you have, the harder the workout. Okay. Oh. So you're going to grab the dumbbells. What's a good, like, standard weight for people to have? Should I do Starting bicep? off, you can, yep, bicep curls. Okay. Soften your knees a little bit. Make sure you're not hyperextending. And there you go. Okay. You already got it. You can already use pickle jars. <laughs> I'm already advanced. You're huh? already advanced. Once you hit the pickle jars, you're good. You're, you're big time at pickle jars. That's right. <laughs> okay, good time. So... And if it's light and you say, you ask what kind of weight that you start with, you can start with five pounds. You can start a little heavier if you want. But the lighter it is, you have to up the reps. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, you say soup cans. I mean, how many reps do I have to do? Like, I would be doing it for, like, 100, 200 reps just well, to... you're at home. So turn on some soaps or turn on a good TV show and just keep curling. And once you start to feel it, just keep working at it. And also, you can take a break. Oh, good. I take like a hearing break, that. <laughs> put it down. But you know what? If you don't think you had a good enough workout, drop, do some push-ups, pick the soup cans back up, keep going. So you never Run sit still. No. Well, that's that's how you that get this body. Keep the heart rate up. Yep. Keep the heart rate up, and you're all good. Okay. What else should I do, do with these dumbbells? So what else you can do is you Probably can... Probably not pound them together. <laughs> no. Well, if you're feeling musical, go for it. Okay. You can put them on your shoulders just like that. Keep your elbows up. When you keep your elbows up, it makes your chest stay up. And you're going to work on our legs so you can squat down and push back up. Okay. Exactly. And when you're squatting, you make sure that your knees don't go past your toes. And it's almost like you're Did trying... you hear them cracking? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm old. And you can actually, if you're just learning how to do this, you can use a chair. So the goal is to, like you're about to sit in a chair, you put your bottom back and down, and you keep the elbows How up. How far down? I mean, do I have to go all the way down? Yeah, I mean, it, ideally you can get a 90-degree angle with your knees, but um, if you're just starting out again, until you feel the pressure, and just push right back Okay, up. well, these are some great tips, and, you know, if you can't make it out to the gym, you have no excuses to pull out the soup cans. We'll be back with more Everyway Woman. Thanks so much Thank for this. You. Everyday Kitchen is next with Everyway Woman. She is a young professional and a woman in a man's world. So today we're interviewing Manji Rios. Welcome to the show. You're running your family's business. Yes, yes. It's, it's a lot. It's a That's lot. That's a lot of pressure. Yes. So <laughs> how old were you when you, you know, started working with your family? I was probably around 17 or 18 years old, right out of high school. Was it always expected that you would step into this role? I think so. I think my dad's always kind of had that feeling in the back of his mind that he's always wanted me to take over for him one day when, whenever he decides to retire. 
Which is probably going to be never, but what about your exactly. mom? Exactly. My mom, um, she helps out with the businesses, okay. but she's more of like the homemaker and stuff. But she definitely is there to help out whenever we need it. I can only imagine they'd be very hands-on. Does the yes. business ever turn off? Is it just family ever at the dinner table or a holiday? I, I think there's, there's spurts and moments when it happens, but not all the time. I mean, business is always on our mind. Branding is always on our mind. So everywhere we go, everything we do, the brand is the first thing that just pops pops to mind and it's always the first conversation started. But what, was it always what you wanted for yourself? Um, not in the beginning. At first I was like, I want to be a lawyer. Then I went to school, got into the whole justice system. And then I was like, I really want to get into probation and parole. I interned at the probation department and That's everything. Serious. Yeah, <laughs> I was I, I was so into it. I love the justice system. It's always been a passion. But you also love tequila. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So you chose to become the marketing director of you know, your family's business instead. Mm -hmm. it, it's a man's world, the spirit industry. It is. It is. Tell it, me about it, that. It, it's, it's very different. You get, you get a lot of those stares and, you know, little snark remarks here and there. Like, but what they say? I, I mean, I've never really had anybody say anything directly to me. But you just know they're saying something? Yeah, you know, because, I mean, it is such a male-dominated category. And I, I haven't been down personally to Mexico to put the recipes and stuff together. My dad did all that himself. But from what I understand, even that process was so hard, especially considering the fact that we aren't Mexican and we're not any type of Latinos. And Let's talk so. about that for a minute. So <laughs> how does that community embrace uh, you know, a non-Mexican tequila. I mean, I okay, think, it comes I from think, Mexico. Yeah, but. It, it comes from Mexico. So it is made in Mexico. But I think initially from when my dad tells the stories, you hear all the different hardships he went through. And it was hard because people, people laughed at him. They're like an Indian in Mexico trying to make tequila to sell in America. Like what, what is going yeah, on? Nothing. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. My head is spinning just trying to put those pieces together. And I can only imagine then how you must feel as a woman walking in who's, you know, a woman, Indian, you're young, you have yeah. all this responsibility. How do you navigate that? Um, I, I'm a very, I guess you could say I'm a little OCD when it comes to things sometimes. And so most of us I'm are, very, yeah, I'm very okay. organized. I always like to be in control and stuff. And so I like to have my stuff planned out and I, I like to see it all scheduled. And, I, and, and I'm sure you approached it that way, but there must have been, you know, your oh, yeah. first mistake that you made when you stepped into the role. And it's your family's business. I mean, the pressure's right. on. Right. I think, I think one of the, probably the biggest things that I did in the beginning was maybe I walked into it and I was like, tequila, yes, all right, we're going to drink and have fun, and, you know, and, well, and, yeah, and, you would you know so. and especially being younger, we started this business four years ago. So I was in my almost late 20s. And so I was I was more in like a party mode and I was ready to just go out and celebrate, sell tequila, get everybody to drink and get the party started. And I think that's where I needed to kind of step back a little bit and be like, okay, this is business. I need to be a little more professional at about what, it. At, yeah, at what point did you learn that lesson? Um, I think just kind of starting right into it, because like you said, being a female in the industry, being a young female and not a Latina, it's it's difficult because was there ever the point you partied a little too hard? Not not in work events. No, no, I have not. So anything we've done with the tequila, tequila has always tempted me. And let yeah. me tell you, <laughs> and the next day it shows. I don't know how I could, you know, yeah. step into work without it showing on my face. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure I've done it plenty of times when I was younger. But so what would you yeah. advise for, you know, a woman stepping into a man's world like this? Um, I would say stay strong, just stay focused and remember that there's there's a lot on your plate and you want to show the boys that you're better, you know? So absolutely. So what's next for line. you? Well, um, recently I started a nonprofit, so I'm getting into that full time as well on top of everything I do with the tequila company. So I have, I have a lot of different goals and ambitions and things I want to do and I'm getting started. Okay. So yeah. you're going to take your next steps yes. and in this nonprofit, what about, you know, family business? Family, biz family, family. I love my family. We are all very, very close. And so you're going to keep it going. Yes. All right. Well, I want you to come back to the show, and we're going to include you in a few more segments because Sounds I cannot good. just talk about tequila without tasting 
Definitely, some you have to try some. Ultra premium, sophisticated, and always a good time, right? Yes, always. Always. <laughs> Stay tuned for some really great segments with Mandy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We'll catch you next time. For more information, go to everywaywoman.com. That was great. I mean, and how cute is it? I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah. Yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day.